We can use the manual sensitivity that we have acquired from laying our hands on radios as a tool to affect our first bend on a toy. Um, this is a robot toy picked up at a flea market in Budapest. It is uh, pretty inspired. So it makes a couple different sounds, and these sounds come out of a very small loudspeaker, which means that they are uh, not only rather limited, but in, in, in uh, range of style, but they're also limited in sound. Now, earlier on, we used the coil, the, the telephone pickup coil, as a sniffing device for picking up the sounds of electromagnetic fields, and I mentioned that it can be used to pick up the the electromagnetic signal that actually makes a speaker move. So if we turn this on into our little amp and we play the sound on the toy and we put this against the back of the head, you hear it louder. Okay. And that's one way to get a little more signal out of this so that we can hear more detail. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and do what I always consider to be the first bend that you can do to a toy to see if it can make more interesting sound or at least sound that can be adjusted over a wider range. So once again, we have to find all the small screws that hold the thing together. and. Take them out. Sometimes these toys have little plastic wedges that hold the plastic together, and you need to pry a little bit. Um, Experienced shucking clams can be useful skill in the world of hacking toys. It also helps to remember all the screws. Open it up, and we have in here the little loudspeaker and a small circuit board. And the way this toy works is that the keypad that you press has little black rubber dots at the bottom that press against these patterns on the circuit board. And these black rubber dots are a form of conductive rubber. And it's a very inexpensive way to make a switch. When one of them presses down, it makes a short circuit on there. You could do the same thing with something like a screwdriver, sometimes, or a wet finger. Okay, so there are alternatives, but this is convenient enough and it sits on top. Okay, now what we're going to try to do is find where the timing component for this circuit is because most toys these days, especially those that have sampled sounds in them, are really small sample playback computers. And like any other computer, it's driven by a clock. And the clock determines the pitch at which the data is spat out, um, what, how fast the lights blink, anything else like that. Now, this black blob here is the actual chip, the integrated circuit. It's been embedded on the board and just covered with a blob of epoxy. We turn the board over and we see a couple of other components. Well, three. We have a resistor here, we have a transistor here, and we have another resistor here. 
Transistors are very often used to make an amplifier for boosting up the signal so that it's strong enough to power a small speaker. The resistor can be the timing component in one of these clocks. And the way we figure that out is we get the thing going and then we put our damp finger on the back of the board across the points where the leads of the resistor come through the board. What we basically want to do is make our finger bridge the resistor. Because thanks to a characteristic of electronics and electricity that's going to become very clear to you pretty soon, if we add a second resistor in parallel, we decrease the amount of resistance. Think of it as adding an extra pipe in a building whose uh, water mains, uh, water risers are very rusted. It allows more current through. And what that will do is it will make the pitch of the clock higher and it'll make the pitch of the samples higher. So what we want to do is we want to start the toy playing and then press various points with a wet finger on the back of the board and see what happens. Now you hear what's happening here is when I put my finger down on it, it goes much higher. It's like tickling a younger sibling. Well, I've heard enough, and I'm looking across, and lo and behold, yes, it's this resistor here, and I can double check it by playing the sample. Yep, so, stop, please. There. Okay, so this resistor would seem to be the clock resistor. What I want to do is I want to take this resistor out and I want to replace it with a variable resistor. This resistor is fixed. The pitch will always be the same. So the first step is desoldering. So I have my soldering iron here. I tin the tip of the iron a little bit so that it conducts heat better. I go on the board and I hold it in such a way that I can pull on the component while melting the solder at one end of it. And yes, it is ridiculously hot on your fingertips when you do this. So sometimes it helps to use a pair of pliers to pull it off. It would be great if I had one more hand than I have, but sadly, I was not born a hacker, I was made a hacker. And cosmetic surgery was not an option. So I've got one end of this resistor out, and hopefully I can pull the other out. There. All right, so this resistor has been removed. And I'm going to put this aside in case I made a mistake and it's not right. And now I have a couple of holes free on the bottom of the board to make a connection with wires for some variable resistor so that I can change the pitch. Now what I'm going to use for a variable resistor is a photoresistor. This photoresistor, which is buried in a little piece of plastic here so that you can't see it very well, is a resistor whose value changes with the amount of light that strikes it. And I've soldered two pieces of wire on, and I'm going to connect these where the resistor I pulled out of the board was connected. So, put the wire through one hole, and melt the solder behind it. Okay, that's in. Now, put the second wire in on this side. Okay. 
Okay, now, if I was successful, hopefully, if I press the keyboard against here and I adjust the amount of light striking the photo cell, we can change the pitch. Well, this seems as though we probably are there. I just have a little difficulty controlling it. So I'm going to put the circuit back together and then see what it sounds like when it's in a somewhat more practical physical arrangement. Okay, so we then try to fit the toy back together without having the pieces drop off. And see how it does. So you can see that we've now made it so that it is the clock speed and therefore the pitch of the toy changes with the amount of light. Now I'm going to blindfold the little fella here so that we can hear him through the amplifier and I'm going to get something to put the toy in so it's a little bit darker. This is like shrouding a victim at Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> <laughs> 